So supposedly we're on, we're live now. <laughs> uh, can you guys all hear us? I hope. Yes. Great. Cool. Uh, Joe is frozen. That's his default state. Um, can't do anything about that. It's uh, and now he's gone. <laughs> So today we're um, today I am <laughs> talking about uh, building product on WordPress, and hopefully Joe will come back. Um, it's uh, a bit surprising, but um, I'll just go for it. So human-made has uh, traditionally, um, you know, been an agency company. Uh, we've, we've we've done a lot of client work, and side by side, we've always um, built some form of product, uh, which you know, in its most basic uh, translation, is really just taking ideas that we may have uh, that are not owned by the client, but rather owned by ours by ourselves, and to then um, try to build those out. And one of those things is um, nomad base, and that's you know the, the case study we'll use today and, and talk about a bit today um, to kind of guide you through the the, the product uh, creation product uh, process at Human Made. Um, so, just a quick introduction uh, with with the Human Made stuff, and I hope you guys can see slides. Um, can you guys see slides? Can someone confirm that? Cool, great. That's good to hear. Um, <laughs> that's great, Kim. I'm happy you can see him. Um, so, human made, um, as you know, a lot of you are familiar with. Um, you know, it's agency based out of Europe. Um, well, based out of Europe, that's where we started. Uh, we have quite a lot of people now. I think we're around like 37 um, humans today. Um, so, a lot of people work on agency. A lot of people work on product. Some people work on events. Um, we really um, try to go the, the, the full sort of um, distance. Um, so the, the gist, and I'm sorry if I'm <laughs> trying to catch up here. Um, I've completely lost Joe, which is a bit unfortunate, but we'll, we'll just do without him uh, for now. Um, so any sort of product that we build at Human Made obviously begins with an idea. And in the case of Nomad Base, um, the idea is pretty straightforward. Um, we felt, and we've we've seen that in, in a lot of cases, that uh, especially when it comes to digital nomads, nomadism, location independent entrepreneurs, uh, remote working, that people are always trying to find themselves, right? So you can't quite see it from the the, the video or the, the, the presentation right now. Uh, but what the slide is essentially showing is a lot of messages from different people on Facebook saying things like, hey, who's in Cambodia right now? Hey, who's in Lisbon right now? Uh, hey, is anybody in Mexico? Um, you know, is anybody in Colombia? Uh, basically trying to find people. And the, the premise really is that Facebook is, is not the best way to go about that. And there's places, there's other places like Nomad List, um, which is just a, a massive Slack channel. So you'll always find people uh, in, inside of that, um, inside of that Slack, which will not necessarily be in that country, although they've joined that channel. So a bit challenging for people uh, like us that are always on the go uh, and trying to meet up with people that are actually in that location, right? So. Uh, enter the idea of uh, nomad base, right? Um, but before we, you know, we start building anything, we like to ask um, lots of different people uh, about their opinion. And a great way to go about that is a survey, right? Um, so interestingly enough, um, we try to figure out how people connect, what they, what kind of tools they use, how open they are to connecting with other people. Just trying to figure out if you know nomad base as a whole um, and, and trying to connect remote workers and digital nomads um, to each other is actually a viable idea. Um, so interestingly enough, uh, one of the questions we asked was, you know, where do you uh, where do you tag or check yourself in on different social platforms? And you know, Facebook was one of those places where 50, 54 percent of respondents said, you know, yes, this is where I, I, I connect. 
Uh, Instagram was another 40%. Um, Swarm was another 24%, and, and, and so on. Um, so basically, there, there's a lot of good coverage um, if we're able to cater to those different APIs. Um, so in, in other words, we don't have to um, you know, get people to do additional check-ins through Nomad Base. Other questions we asked were, uh, would you be okay with other nomads contacting you through a map? Uh, in which case, 94% of respondents said yes. And keep in mind, this is about 100 plus people that responded to this. Um, we also asked, would you be comfortable with sharing your location with other nomads? Uh, and this is on a city level, you know, obviously not like the, uh, your Latin longitude uh, um, position. Um, and 48 or, you know, half of the people said, um, you know, no problem at all. Uh, that's, that's, that's an easy one to go. Um, and uh, another 42% said, yes, that's no problem at all, as long as it's invite only. I'm seeing a small comment that the slides are a bit small. I, because Joe's not on here, I'll see if I can remove um, some of these things. Uh, that should be a bit better. Um, Scott, if you want to log in and try to reinvite Joe because I'm, I'm doing all this, that would be really super helpful because I, I'll, I'll have to spend quite a bit of time trying, trying to find him. Thanks, man. Um, cool. So other questions we ask people, um, and you know, all these questions are really important to be able to you know, try to get some weight behind the idea as opposed to just me you know, being like, hey, this is a great idea. Um, other questions we asked is, you know, would you be interested in receiving an email every time you landed in a new city to find out which other nomads were around you? 92% yes. Um, you know, pretty, pretty strong indicator there. Uh, another question was, do you use Airbnb when traveling? 88% uh, said yes, which is again pretty awesome. Um, so that's these. These are all like really great reaffirming um, comments, I guess. You know, when you when you're when you have an idea and you go out and you ask another hundred people what their opinion on your idea is, and you see from some, from the basic feedback that you know there's something to the idea. Um, obviously, uh, the the distance you have to cross between. <clears throat> idea and actually product that's out there and working is you know that's that's what we're all trying to solve um but at, at least that's a good start so to to go a step further you know where do we go from here you know like what's the next step um so one of the things that i that i, that I try to think of is in this form of a, a minimal SaaS. Uh, so trying to think of, you know, how can we look at software as a service, but then, you know, look at it from an MVP perspective. Um, you know, what is the, the least amount of work uh, we need to put in to actually create something? Hi, Joe. Are you actually here? Woo! <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> That's so easy. Keep going. <laughs> I've been listening the whole time, so don't worry. Carry on. Cool. Yeah. And I've just been here all along nodding. <laughs> sure. Um, so one of the things we, we try to do is, is, is think in this concept of, of minimal SaaS. And, and there's, there's three or so components, I guess, to what this minimal SaaS framework is. Um, the first is APIs. Um, so tapping into uh, information that already exists or is being populated on other platforms. Um, and as Owen said, you know, grand entrance, uh, but also grand exit, I guess, in this case. <laughs> so uh, Joe's off again. <laughs> uh, so the first thing is APIs. Uh, we love to be able to pull in different information from different platforms. And I'll show you examples in a second. Um, the second is frameworks and um, different sort of open source platforms. So in this case, WordPress and other tools we can use to really speed up development. And the third is, you can't see the text, but hijacking external sites. Uh, so be it to use a Chrome extension or otherwise to sit on another site to be able to uh, bump up retention, bump up activity or whatever it is on the platform. So let me give you an example of what this would look like for uh, Nomad Base. So the, the slide's actually not too bad. You should be able to see um, most things on the slides. 
Um, so in the top left corner, we have the APIs. Uh, and it's in, in, on, in the case of Nomad Base, we actually connect to all of these. So Facebook, Twitter, Swarm, Instagram, and TripIt. All of these are uh, data points uh, or indicators of where you currently are or where you will be in the future, right? So for future travel, that's what TripIt does a, a good job of being able to provide. Um, so this is very important to us. We're not duplicating data. We're not asking the user to you know, re-enter data. We want to be able to live off data that already exists. Um, in terms of you know, trying to move fast, um, we have things like WordPress, obviously. Uh, we can manage all of the users. Um, yes, I can make that slide full screen. That is a very good comment. Let me just do that real quick. Cool. Um, so, in the ter in, in terms of frameworks, um, you know, there's, there's WordPress for managing users, uh, Mapbox for you know, like all the the, the, the visualization, uh, and then I've mentioned other things like React and Vermin that just help us uh, move a bit faster when it comes to development. And then when I talk about hijacking websites, uh, and you know, as I say that, it sounds a bit aggressive, but <laughs> definitely isn't. Um, you know, we could put in a button on Booking.com, Airbnb, or Foursquare that when you search a location or a particular date, that we can then show, hey, these other people are also there. Um, so it's a you know, it's a it's a nice way to push growth to be relevant, um, and um, you know, to create a platform that uh, actually speaks to the users. Um, so all of these technologies are obviously not owned by us, right? Um, so it's, 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 it's mashing up a lot of things to try and build something quickly. Apart from the WordPress one, maybe. <laughs> what, what about that one? <laughs> Sorry. So none of them are owned by us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I'm not getting into that fight. Um, <laughs> no, it wasn't a uh, political comment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, big question. So, you know, like, you know, we've gone through a survey, we've got the idea, um, you know, Joe's on board. Um, everybody's, you know, there's, there's a couple of people like, hey, this sounds exciting. Do we build the MVP? Do we spend the time, you know, doing something like that? Um, but then we have to ask ourselves, you know, hey, is this something that we should actually be building at human made? Um, and that's that's a valid question, right? Because we have you know almost forty humans, and they all have ideas in terms of what we should build. Um, so it's it, it's very important in that regard that we have a, a, a vetting process. And to give you guys some insight in, in what our vetting process is, um, let me just shoot through that. Um, it, it's quite simple. Um, there's there's three components to it really. Are there two or three passionate owners behind an idea? Uh, and in this case, you know, Joe and I off the bat um, were the ones that pushed us forward. Um, is this something that would be used by us? Yes. We want to be able to see if, if you know, someone is around, um, especially as we at Human Made, doesn't, we don't really view Human Made as just the people that work there, but also the, the community that we interact with and all the people that are around us. So we want to be able to have, you know, a, a view on that. So it definitely speaks to that. Um, and then last but not least, is it close to human made uh, as, as a whole, right? And in this case, it does because it, it, it speaks to remote working, to this whole concept or trend of digital nomadism, um, this movement rather, you know, of, of, of trying to become a location independent. Um, and, you know, if we're able to attain these, these three elements, then we have something that's worthy of working on. So the answer is a resounding yes, and I don't have video, which sucks. Who's that guy? Who's that guy? It's Snoop Dogg, bro. It doesn't play. <laughs> Let me see if it plays. No, it doesn't play. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's all right. You're holding up a classic <laughs> presentation <laughs> fail. Uh, no, it's a, <laughs> it's try to embed tool. a video. This tool's no good, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> You're uh, trying to play in a PDF, though, mind so. What? There's no PDF. This is that's what you're viewing, isn't it? No, it's a keynote file, but oh, I can't. Oh, okay. Sorry, because it doesn't do that. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It might need to be in play in presentation mode. I've tried that. It doesn't work. <laughs> okay. Maybe we should get back to. <laughs> this is not the greatest tool, Joe. <laughs> Trust me, I've been here for at least fifteen minutes. And yeah, no, fine, fine. Like I think I've got like three times experiences. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 
we've agreed on, uh, you know, the, the, the three elements come together. It's something that is worth doing. And, you know, from a human made perspective, this fits in and checks all the boxes. So let's build some shit, right? Uh, let's build some cool stuff and move forward with that. Um, are you ready to share your screen at all? <laughs> um, sure. Why not? I mean, uh, I feel like I can't get any worse from my uh, tech side. <laughs> so, uh, fair enough. Um, so, yeah. Um, I, do you want me to do it now? Do you want me to take over the uh, screen? Um, you can uh, start setting it up, and I'll describe what oh, okay. <laughs> V1 does. <laughs> and I think that will work in well. Um, so, what we've done with what we did with the first version of Nomad Base was to say, "Hey, let's plot out everybody on a map." Um, let's get let's get all the different people on on a map to show which city they're in, and to be able to um, you know visualize the, the world or the Earth as is with nomads all across that map. And and what we did there, I'm just Whoa. zooming out. No worries. Can you see my screen now? Is there anything weird on there? Should I close it? <laughs> Nothing weird. Oh, okay. I was a bit worried. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if I can watch you whilst I'm sharing my screen because that's going to get some kind of screenception thing going on. Yeah, we're pretty used to that. Um, but oh. anyway, coming full circle back to what I was talking about, uh, version one and the MVP that we built was really a, a discovery tool. It, it is a map of the world with all the nomads on it. And I, I won't really talk about the outcome yet, but we got a lot of signups, a lot of people came onto there, and it was a great experiment in terms of you know combining WordPress, the REST API, React, and Mapbox. And I'll let Joe give a demonstration of how it works once he's logged in right about now. Okay, so um, I wasn't here to begin this screen. conversation. Part of that was because uh, I'm currently on an island off of Croatia right now. So it's pretty bad internet. So I don't know how this screen sharing exactly is going to hold up. Um, but I'm going to rely on uh, Noel's occasional comments to let me know that you're actually still there. Um, so uh, there's, there's a couple of kind of components I just thought would be maybe cool to uh, demonstrate, I guess, uh, to do with Nomad Base or kind of what we built here. Um, so the coolest thing that I like about Node Base isn't really something that we did because, uh, as you'll probably might see from the kind of Noel's notes so far, is we're usually uh, more interested in kind of getting to a solution as quickly as we can with you know the least amount of effort and resources. So all of the tools we're using are conglomeration of other people's tools, really. And uh, one of those is the the map that we have here. So um, this is using uh, Mapbox, like I mentioned, but it's using a pretty uh, modern version uh, called uh, GLJS, which uh, basically gives you these uh, really nice, and I'm not sure how smooth this is on my screen sharing, but these really nice smooth vector uh, maps. So rather than kind of the old school Google Maps where like usually you would like click in and click out and you would drag and you would get like bitmap uh, tiles loading in, this is using like really nice um, kind of a, a vector and everything so so as, as you can zoom to any level and it, it progressively pulls and everything else and because this was like the core of the experience i guess they want to do with the map then uh it it was like a nice find i guess to do that and you can also create your own custom maps with this uh, that's how we have a, our own style on them uh, like this so then this is plugged into uh react app so what you're seeing here is all rendered with react so there we uh, created like a custom library to be able to render a uh, map box in React and manage that. So that's kind of where you're seeing with all of these dots, which represent different cities. Um, when you select one of these, all of this is kind of custom stuff on top of the map box GL stuff. Um, and the, the main thing that I want to show, because I'm incredibly proud of it, uh, is uh, this me map thing. You're testing lines. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so uh, I, I think maybe if people seen no one based screenshots before, then they've probably seen this. Um, so this is basically uh, my last. Um, what is the date? We're on uh, uh, 2016. So this is probably about uh, seven or eight years of travel history brought in from um, Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, um, 
and Instagram. And then has plotted all of these different locations uh, for my whole, uh, you know, online like life, I guess. Wall? Yeah, well, well, that's kind of like flying, if you were to fly over there. So, so we'll get into that. Did you fly over the North Pole? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't visit the North Pole, because this is a geodesic. When you're actually, if, if you were to fly direct from uh, New York to Bangkok, you would go over the North Pole. However, uh, because you actually stop off um, in the Middle East somewhere typically, right. or you go around the other way, it's just because I didn't have a location set to there. So I don't have like that intermediary location. So it thinks that I've flown the whole way. Um, so anyway, uh, as you can see, because we're using like the uh canvas render then everything is like really nice and smooth and there's like a huge amount of uh calculations i guess that go into uh drawing all of these so i'm not really um you know i'm not a classically trained computer scientist or mathematician so i don't even really fully understand the mathematics that goes behind drawing geodesics onto a Mercator projection i just know that it's difficult enough that um I couldn't explain it now not because anybody else isn't smart enough to understand it because i'm not smart enough to explain it uh, but we found, I, I found some libraries that were able to plot this and then I kind of like clutched that in with the, uh, um, map box stuff and kind of, I think what we have is a really nice user experience again, because the map is kind of the core of that. I really put a lot of effort into making sure, uh, that bit was really nice. Uh, but all of the ways that we get there, like kind of Noel had in his previous slides, just always existing tools stuck together. So, um, I think. If you take uh, one thing away from how we built all of this, it's really we've relied on a lot of tools. And that's how I say that we do build stuff, I guess, in the beginning. And that kind of brings me on to my next point. Um, so I'm going to attempt to switch over to some code here. So uh, I don't know if you were expecting this when you saw Noel Talk was going to be giving a talk. Um, it's actual code editor with real code. Hey, tabs, uh, not spaces. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> You've watched Silicon Valley. That's good. Um, I'm glad you watched it. So as, as part of this kind of, uh, I guess because New One Base was a side project for us, uh, like at every step of the way, we were just kind of doing the minimum that we could to kind of get the result that we wanted. So we wanted to put people on the map when we got that and we're like, okay, it'd be cool if we could show your travel history. We like did the minimum we could to do that. Um, and because of that, we also built the backing on WordPress because we can move very quickly with WordPress. And it's very, uh, you know, got a huge amount of tools around that already. Um, and things like that. But one of the uh, kind of trade-offs that you have with building things in this way is uh, you kind of like keep moving quickly and at some point everything just kind of starts crumbling. Um, so this is like usually the uh, kind of um, problem of like how much time do you invest up front into terms of like making tested, reusable, uh, very nice code. Um, and uh, I'd say in terms of architectural decisions, I'd probably say, you know, every every decision we made for building out Nomad Base was for the next feature that we wanted. It wasn't like for Nomad Base to even be as big as it is right now. Uh, so because of that, then you're kind of constantly having to evolve how things are stored in the database, how the um, queries are handled because they're getting bigger and more people are using it and things like that. Uh, so because of that, um, we have to do a really quite large amount of migrations of different data all the time um, because we're changing how we've stored things. Uh, so this is kind of um, a somewhat uh, unique part of Nomad Base, which is we just have a WPCLI uh, class to provide lots of commands to run migrations on different data uh, when, when you know, those uh, things change. So if we need to change a feature, for example, the cities uh, feature, we never really had a concept of actual specific cities before. It was just like every location, and then you collapse those down. So anyway, we we then like added this custom table for these, um, and then we have a like WP CLI command now to migrate that data. And as you can see from all of these, like the amount of times, and my scrolling might be just looking awful here, but I'm like uh, you know a quarter way down of the file here. Um, so the data underneath has gone through a huge amount of. Uh, manipulation over the, I guess, coming up to about a year now, um, because we were only building for the immediate future. Um, but uh, that, that's not really, I, I don't think for me, that's not a lesson of like, I should build stuff more future proof. Because the truth is, you don't really know, you know, 
uh, exactly how the product is going to look in the future, whether you're going to continue doing it, um, or if it goes in a different direction. For example, I remember the first iteration of Nomad Base, we really focused on things like um, Wi-Fi spots and coffee shops to work in and things, and the, and the concept was kind of different. And as we kind of progressed, then the, the features and the way that you store data has to adapt to that. So uh, the, the Nomad Base code base, I'd say, you know, isn't the most elegant code base in, in the world. Like it's, it's well written in terms of it's all, you know, well formatted code and, you know, secure and is pretty performant because of the traffic we have and things. Um, but it's not uh, some kind of very abstracted code base that could, uh, you know, last for a couple of years of us kind of iterating on the features that we have. It's really a code base to do exactly what you do see in the app on the screen. Um, and because of that, uh, I, I think that it's a very kind of uh, lean approach, I guess, to, to building it out. And um, Nomad Base still is like a very fun project for me to work on because everything is very malleable and adaptable in terms of the code base. We're not really limited ourselves in terms of like strong OOP design of how we have um, you know, the architecture set up. So it's all, you know, you hook in, you do what you want to do for the data and you're done kind of thing. Uh, so it's more of a, that's kind of like a, a general philosophy, I think, that I've taken with building our Noma base, which um, I think is, uh, you know, valuable, I think, when I take it to other projects, especially for side projects for a human made where we don't necessarily know where they're going to go or how long they're going to go on for. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of uh, me waffling philosophical about development anyway um, <laughs> of the choices we've made i uh, say that again sorry i missed that <laughs> that, was oh, that was cool though I, I said did you want to talk about the philosophy behind a typography <laughs> you'll have to <laughs> of course know all about that um your mind pushed out on like anything aesthetic um so all of the uh, design of Nomad Base was not really done by me. No, it gives me a bad rap for some reason. I, it's not like I'm not <laughs> the world's most terrible designer. I mean, but um, almost, yeah. But most um, most is from No. Um, <laughs> so I'll I'll, I'll um, check in the bus or anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that that was that was a version one, and it, and and it. And it it was cool because we launched it and we got like a thousand users in a week and you know like the it, it was a nice um it was definitely a nice proof of concept um but in terms of um functionality and sort of feature set or even like what's what's the interaction that people are really be are, are really chasing um we just didn't really have that you know people were coming back to nomad base to maybe check out their map or something like that uh, their personal map but they weren't really using it for to find out like you know where other nomads are or you know what to do and the, you know we realized um through other surveys and other feedback that trying to go about this sort of very uh, sort of open world kind of you know connect with whoever you want and uh, here's the, all the freedom you need um, we we provided too much flexibility to the point that users weren't connecting with each other. Um, so as nice and fun as V1 is to us, it's not very practical to other people. Um, and I guess that in any sort of two-sided platform, um, the, the entire objective of what we're trying to do uh, by connecting nomads is really being able to facilitate um, the way that you know, two different parties come together. Um, so in that regard, uh, we started, we, we took a step back and we started working on, on the concept of a, a mobile app um, whereby we would, you know, focus on the core interaction. So it's, it, it's sort of counterintuitive to the engineering side of like, hey, we've built all this really cool stuff um, and having to take a big step back and saying, okay, from a U, UX perspective and from an interaction perspective, like what is the, the actual thing we want to do? Um, and we realized that because we have so many people on the platform, and, you know, we have over 3,000 now, um, the best way to really be able to connect people on that level is to to do it in a way that is that that brings the right sort of relevancy, right? Um, and in this case, being able to filter users um, on on the location they're in right now, 
um, and also if they're there right now too. So it's it, it's a it's a it's a space and time uh, sort of concept. So we wanted to be we want to to work towards um, really focusing the experience to only being able to see people that are currently around you. Um, so not people that will be around you in a couple weeks or or were you know two years ago or someone that's uh, you know 200 kilometers or miles away but rather really focusing on people that are in the city or town that you're in right now uh, at, at this exact moment uh, and, and being able to highlight that um, so unfortunately that kind of does away with the map right because we have to move away from this sort of discovery concept and, and move towards this more funneled experience where we're really helping people connect with each other and taking away some of the sort of free flow or free form um, sort of choice that the user had before to connect with anyone. Um, but, you know, the, the, the typical issue arise when, you know, presented with too much freedom, people ultimately just took no choice at all. Um, so the, the, the big goal with V2 is being able to, to work towards that. Um, did you did you want to talk about a bit about V two or did you want me to talk about my uh, some of the mockups first? Um, I I would just say uh, that um, as a hint, <laughs> the the web app is built on uh, React JS, which I spent probably yeah. a, a good few months um, just getting involved with and quite enjoying and like relearning, I guess to. Uh, a, a fairly solid level, and that uh, led me into looking into React Native, um, which is a very similar concept, but for building mobile apps. Um, so that is kind of uh, an, another thing that I've been doing quite a bit of the past few months, already have, um, or, or also um, I'm playing around with a uh, WordPress uh, client app for the REST API as well in React Native. Um, so that's kind of what we're uh, looking at using here. Just to jab in my um, technology <laughs> uh, quota for this one, that's what I'll say. You can carry on. Yeah, for sure. Um, cool. So, w with regards to the, the mobile app itself, did we want? Um, should I just present a, a, a bit of what we want to work towards, and then you'll talk about the React Native stuff? Uh, and then, from a time perspective, maybe we'll dive into the questions, I guess. Yeah, yeah, we don't have a huge amount left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, late start. <laughs> um, so as, as, as I was saying, like, um, you know, we, we had our proof of concept. And because this is like a side project of a side project, it, it, it's really we're trying to, you know, especially from a development perspective and early on, you know, trying to find time between Joe and myself in terms of uh, getting product out there. It's, it's always a slow process. Um, but we came back to the realization that, hey, um, we need to be able to um, consolidate or sort of compact the, the user experience. Um, so one of the ways we want to do that is um, through a mobile app. And when someone lands inside of that app, instead of just providing them with a, a map of all nomads all around the world, rather say, hey, you know, this is, this is the city you're in. Do you want to join the city now, the chat of it, or do you, you know, do you rather would you rather skip out on that? Um, so very much funneling the experience towards, um, you know, meeting other very specific nomads that are around you. Um, similarly, you know, like also being able to construct a, a sort of narrative um, across your travels. Um, so whilst uh, you know Joe and, or myself or any other nomad may, may be in one place right now. Um, also show future travel and the, the potential to see where other people will be there and try to provide some incentives for people to, um, you know, write or, you know, enter that data up front, um, or, you know, some ways in advance. Um, and then the core of the, inter uh, the entire interaction boiling down to that if you click and say, hey, look, I, I am actually in the city and I like to partake in conversations, um, really pulling together um, all of the interaction in a single chat window. Um, so kind of drawing onto how chat and sort of messenger applications today are becoming more enhanced or they, they have richer data inside of them. Um, so, you know, using this chat to in part, and I'm just going to focus on this actually, um, using this chat to, to be able to say, hey, uh, you know, someone's arrived in the city, someone else has left, 
Uh, so again, creating that narrative and also, you know, showing which users are around as opposed to just this massive map of everything. Um, so really just going down um, that way. So, Joe? Oh, you're still there. Okay, cool. I'm here. <laughs> Don't worry. I thought I lost Stop. you again. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think, like, in kind of to, to wrap this up and, you know, because we've, we've talked about a lot of things and it feels like this half an hour is going through in, like, five minutes. But um, <laughs> the I like, because it was 20 minutes, was, like, you setting up. Um, the... Um, I guess you know some of the lessons learned for us, um, especially with the, the side project stuff, is obviously um, try to validate stuff early. Um, so you know the survey helped us, but then when we translated that into a, a product, you know maybe it was it, that product was guided more by you know what we already wanted to see before. Uh, you know, at least speaking for myself, like I was like you know React Mapbox, yes, let's just build this. Uh, because it sounds yeah, fun. I'm finding uh, the evidence to justify. Yeah, <laughs> right. you know, it's kind of like, it's not like Google Analytics, and you're like, yeah, you know, I think the story fits this data, you know? Right. That's, <laughs> right? Cause that's how Google Analytics works, right? You can, you can justify any story in there. Really <laughs> murder by just looking at Google Analytics. Uh, <laughs> um, so... You know, that was a lesson learned that, you know, we should have probably validated earlier on what the, the actual core interaction was going to be as opposed to starting off too broad with, with, with what the purpose of the application was. Um, yeah, I think I'd, I'd agree with that. Um, with the, uh, when, when we were doing the mobile app uh, kind of concepts as well, and, and still are to a large degree, um, the initial concept was to not um, build any, uh, frankly, communication mechanism into the app. Uh, so we were planning to uh, offload the actual people being able to chat with each other to something like Telegram. We would integrate with it, so you could uh, jump around, you know, jump into the Telegram from the Nomad base app, and you, then you would be with the people there as well. Um, but after uh, surveying everybody, we really realized that there just wasn't um, enough uh, single, um, there, there wasn't a single communication app that everybody used that we could integrate with, basically. So that's like led the decision to actually build that chat feature uh, as, a, as really just the core experience of the app now. But because we have that, then the, the nice side effect of that is uh, we're going to be imbuing that chat is with a lot of... Uh, specific features around like no show when people are arriving and leaving um integrating you know uh meetup stuff maybe and things like that into the chat stream um so like i i think the uh, you know um the biggest takeaway for me for nomad base and working on it is just like uh surveys are really valuable to to um to work out i i guess you know um who your user base is uh, and then just really uh, looking at all of that and, and the other data that you have around what people are already using you know, on our website, uh, on, on the web app, and letting that really inform the decisions rather than uh, starting with kind of the idea that you want, which is maybe what we initially did, and then said, yeah, no, I mean, people are saying they want to meet each other. Therefore, this map idea does work. Um, but if any, everybody is really telling you, know, you that they want to meet each other, then if you're starting with that as a first principle rather than wanting a map, then you're probably not going to come to a map. Um, so it's uh, you know, all a learning experience. And I guess I'm uh, quite excited for uh, you know the, the next ideas we have of having something that's running on the phone and I think fitting the context much better of really the problem we're trying to solve. Yeah, for sure. I think like one of the, the larger things and takeaways I think for anybody else like listening is, is, is certainly that you know side projects and wherever they happen like just don't happen perfectly and they're they're bound to run into issues and that's kind of the the beauty of it all uh, and in the case of the first iteration we you know we we spent a couple weekends here and there hacking on it but you know lost the the, the sort of vision of like what is the actual um point of value between users uh, and where is that value being exchanged and we hadn't answered that uh, with, with the, the the first version uh, but you know, right. fun, and that's. I mean, it, it was difficult to tell it. I think early on because um, 
the thing is, like, it, it's kind of quite cool, right? I, I think, you know, people usually going to raise like, oh, sweet, cool, I'll sign up for that, click login, whatever. Um, so our initial numbers were really strong. Uh, we had thousands of signs up in not, not long at all. Um, but then, yeah, we just kind of saw that uh, trailing off because there's, you know, when, when you really look at it, there's not, um, it's not really solving any problems beyond the like, oh, cool, here's a tool that looks like it's made for me. I'll sign up. Um, but then, uh, you know, in, in um, the following days or weeks or whatever of that user signing up, then what are they then able to continue doing that kind of thing? And that's really the, the uh, what seems to be obviously in retrospect now. But um, at the time, we were just kind of like building a cool thing and, you know, uh, people were, were signing up for it. So that was like a very short uh you know scale of validation for that which i think was ultimately uh you know uh, need to be played out for longer for us to see that uh that, that wasn't really actually uh succeeding in quite the way that we wanted it to. yeah for sure um before we dive into questions i i, I guess uh, another interesting sort of observation is that you know we've done word sesh a few times and we've done different presentations on product and things like that and every time we talk about all this stuff it seems that WordPress itself gets less time. Yeah, no, I realize we haven't really talked about WordPress. Sorry right. about that. I think that's, that's, <laughs> I think that's kind of the beauty of it is that it's people need to realize that it's a tool and you know a, a, a tool that and a platform that's that can be used to 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 great abilities and to really you know push your ideas. But at the same time, it's not going to build it yourself. And there's so many other technologies yeah. and, and and sort of creative energy that has to go towards it, right? And I mean, I see that as a um, I'll I'll somehow make this a positive thing about our talk that we didn't actually talk about WordPress. I think it kind of shows that uh, WordPress is pretty mature and grown up and is capable of doing a lot of things. Uh, when we've made a a, a product here, right, that uh, is fairly non-traditional in terms of the WordPress scope of things. Um, and we've oh, no. uh, made it for people that aren't really aware that it's on WordPress or whatever. We don't really talk about it being on WordPress that much. Like we're, we're talking about it because of the unique features it has, uh, rather than um, you know the, the WordPress type stuff that it is doing. Like we have a blog or whatever that's on WordPress as well. The whole back end of Nomad Base, the REST API, all of that is. Um, but the, the fact that we don't even need to really mention it that much, I think is just testament to, to it. it is a very solid framework to build on. And you can really focus on the unique things that you want to do with whatever ideas that you have. And the WordPress part becomes less novel because of that, which I, I think when you're using WordPress in this way is actually a really good thing. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, it's, it's really a testament to it and not the other way around. Um, let, let's answer some of the questions that are here. Um, I hope we've been heavily trolled. That's what I'm at. Yeah, right. <laughs> you what happens you whenever I do anything. Like this. <laughs> um, no, I think you have to use your real name, so it doesn't happen as well. <laughs> um, how did you survey 100 people? Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, you survey Gizmo, set up a survey, um, asked a lot of questions in that survey, and then sent it out to a bunch of digital nomads that either I had you know, met or... Uh, in posted in different groups. Uh, there's the the whole sort of digital nomad community um, is, is can be defined through a set of overlapping Facebook groups. Um, that's probably the best way I could define it. <laughs> uh, it's pretty. It sounds like a very accurate. Decision. It's. it's I, I'm coming to the realization as I said it, it's extremely accurate. Um, but yeah, use survey gizmo there. Um, second question, what kind of monthly page views is Nomad Base getting? And, don't know, uh, not much. Um, and how have you found a Mapbox developer UX so far? How have you found um, the UX of it? Because I quite like the little Mapbox tool and changing the map colors and all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, on the, I'd say on the page views one, page views is a, a bad metric for a, a web app or something like that. Um, thousand page views, one dollar. Amount of interactions is probably a better metric, um, but the, no, the numbers are probably going to be difficult to relate. If it's fifty thousand um, in, interactions, we're probably running out. It's difficult to actually, you know, for people to know to work back from that. In terms of the amount of active users, 
um, it's not a huge amount, it's maybe 20% or something. Uh, um, yeah, the uh, so Mapbox developer experience, uh, I'd say very good, but um, uh, we've, so for anybody who doesn't know, Mapbox kind of like has this big builder section where you build a map to be how you want it to look it, and then you basically just include the JavaScript library in your app, and then it works kind of thing. Um, so uh, I, I'd say for that section, very good. Uh, the the Mapbox GLJS, uh, which is different to Mapbox JS, this is like the next iteration. It is still very early days, so because of that, there is not many. Uh, not a huge amount of documentation or ecosystem around it. People that have written add-ons for Mapbox, it's usually for Mapbox GHS. So we were kind of knew that we were on the uh, bleeding edge, so to speak, there. But even the experience is so much better uh, that it was still worth uh, kind of sinking the time in for that, I think. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Um, well, let's try to plow through the rest of them. Um, what backend are you using for a chat in a mobile app? I, th I think you got like a React module going there, right? Uh, so the the back end actually so uh, the back end is in like what is behind the API for the chat. Um, I always said that the only thing that I wouldn't recommend using WordPress for is a chat app, and I would uh, like to roll back that statement. <laughs> <because> <laughs> that is actually what I've gone and done. Uh, I'll quickly uh, explain why maybe we did that um, because most people probably think that's an absolutely terrible idea. Um, so because uh, I guess a little bit like I said earlier in terms of how we've developed Nova Base is very much so like, this is what we need to do, so let's just build it to do that. Uh, in this case, we don't need an incredibly uh, robust chat app, which has um, you know uh, super uh, high delivery, uh, quick delivery times. We don't need things like uh, delivery ports, uh, all, all of those kind of things, uh, the same level of encryption that you'd want with something like Telegram. Um, so because of that, then it's just a very simple, uh, there's a custom table uh, in WordPress, uh, which has REST API, and then the app will um, probably, will, will initially poll maybe every five seconds for that, um, and that'll probably be switched to a WebSocket or something with a, a um, node in between. Um, but yeah, I guess like this is probably the best example, I guess, actually of, and, and we'll see whether it pays off for us. Maybe we'll do another tour in a year, and it turns out this was a terrible idea. Um, but because we want to put a lot of other uh, stuff uh, in the chat, you know, different uh, types of messages, different, you know, people have arrived and left and things like that, uh, then just like controlling all of that specifically is going to be quite valuable, I think, to be able to control the messaging system from the ground up. And um, I'm not really deterred by things like the idea of building a messaging system. I just kind of jump into it. And, you know, you can usually get something patched together that looks good enough. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah I mean, I guess so. the big difference here is that we're we're not replicating another one, but trying to create a, a even even with a few UX tweaks, it, it, it's already becoming a, a different experience in itself. Right. Uh, so we can certainly enhance towards the the niche of um, nomads, location independent entrepreneurs, and, and pro provide a narrative within the chat that that, that feeds towards them. Um, another question here, is there a roadmap for monetizing or is free forever the plan? Um, yeah, good question. Um, so because this is sort of a, well, it is, uh, I guess, a two-sided platform, um, we do, it only makes sense to uh, keep the, the consumer side of it free forever um, to be able to attract users to the platform. Um, you know, things like Snapchat, Instagram, or whatever, just don't charge the consumer um, for the product on that side of the equation, but rather charge brands for being part of it, um, especially as then brands are quite limited and do not interfere with, um, you know, the, the overall experience of the application. So I guess at the very core, um, the what we want to achieve with Nomad Base is not really like, hey, let's have a cool product, but it's also supposed to feed into the larger uh, vision of human made and the, the sort of thought leadership that we want to provide within remote working, um, you know, people being on a move. Uh, it, it's something that we very much believe in um, and we want to be able to contribute to, but we don't see it as something that, you know, we charge consumers at because that's, you know, that's the people we want to meet ourselves. Right when we're on the road, because again, coming back to like why we build this, it's it's an application that we want to use. Um, I we got five minutes. Well, 
the scar. No, I think I think I think uh, if that's the question, I think we've got to cut it. I know, but Joe, there's also, <laughs> there's also the Slack bot. We created Nomad Bot. Oh, we did. Oh man. And and if people have Slack teams, they should contact us to use the whereas function because then we could, you know. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna try doing a quick demo. I'm gonna completely ignore Scott's screams yes. from the corner. Who's Scott? <laughs> Who's this Scott guy? Uh, which which channel dare I open on? on this? I was just what do you want to think about, about this? Oh, right, I'm just gonna open general. I hope nobody <laughs> said anything too obscene. Oh no, I've, I've I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. I think we're good. I think we're all right. Okay. <laughs> Put you in focus. Okay, so it should be able to do. Oh, there it is. Noel. Is it going to work? Oh, it's going to fail. I know it. No. It, it worked. Okay. So basically what this is doing is uh, everybody in Human Made has their neuron base accounts linked to the Slack bot. And then whenever they change their location on neuron base, you can ask them where it is. It'll tell you where they are and also tell you what the time is where they are because, unfortunately, the Slack one requires you to update it manually. And there okay. we go. Sorry, Scott. So if you have a Slack team and you want to use this and you want to be a beta on this kind of thing, then just let us know. It's really cool, and we'll probably add more features to it. Um, hey, we love you guys all. <laughs> I've done a mobile app now. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a mobile app. Cool. I think that's all. all right. That's it. All right. Done. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Laters. How do I end this? I end it. Ha, 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 ha.